In our mind, we think that, jo that God is going to judge according to a curve. And if you can remember being back in school, whenever you take a test, and the teacher would say, well, the grades on this test are going to be given in accordance with a curve. You always hated the person in the class who made 100 on a test like that. Because it messed up the curve. There was no curve when somebody makes 100. And, you know, if the best grade was 84%, you probably felt good because your 42 or whatever would be brought up to maybe a, a passing, passing grade. Well, we think God's going to do that. We think maybe Billy Graham's going to be the top of the curve. And although Billy Graham's great, he's not perfect, and that allows us some imperfections in our life as well. But the curve's not going to be set like that. Just because we drive by a golf course on the way to church and see all these people golfing on a Sunday morning, we think, boy, they're going to get what they got. I'm a lot better than they are. Or I can remember driving to a small church in the San Francisco area. We crossed the Bay Bridge, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, and all these, if it's a nice day, all these boats and yachts to be out there, you get this sense of they're going to get it someday. <laughs> they are not in church like they should be. And I am. I must be a special person. Or driving along Riverside Drive on Sunday morning, got all these people running and working on that physical part of it, but they're not in church. And we get that sense that that makes us somehow special. Well, the curve's not going to be set like that. We're not going to be the top of the curve. We are, the curve is already set. There's already a top, and it's Jesus Christ. And He is that standard. And if we don't match up to that, we don't pass the test. When I was a kid... My brothers, who were always leading me in on wrong directions, my brothers led me to climb a mountain. We were staying in Estes Park at a campground that had this big, huge mountain right next to us. And I was about 10 years old, and they had this idea, let's go to the top of the mountain. So we take off from the camp, and I'm up there jumping ledges with, with you know, you could kill yourself if you, if you fell, and going all the way to the top of this mountain. It took about an hour and a half to get up there, and... We don't know that the whole camp's noticed that we've gone up the mountain, and they're going nuts down in the camp below. And then we get to the top, and we, we crawl over to the edge, and here we're looking down, and they're looking up at us, just, oh, no, there's a 10-year-old on the edge of that cliff up there. But my brothers took me up there. I don't know how many thousand feet it was, but we went to the top of that mountain. Now, somebody who climbs Mount Everest would say, that's nothing. But the object is to get to the moon, climb to the moon. Mount Everest is nothing. And Jesus Christ sets his standard up there that I don't care if your behavior is Mount Everest or if it's this little mountain in Estes Park, Colorado, we all fall woefully short. And we are going to be judged according to our deeds. And one deed that is, that is improper makes us fall short, much less if you have one every day or every hour in your life. We are going to be judged according to those things. And the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20 says that there's going to be books opened. And these books are going to have every thought, every deed that we've ever done. And I'm going to have a whole library wing named after me, I think, for everything that I've done, for as many books as it's going to take to handle it. But you know, the good news is in Revelation chapter 20, it says there's going to be another book, the book of the Lamb. And if my name's in there, those other things are inadmissible. They're all under the blood of Jesus Christ. But apart from that saving shed blood, we're going to be judged according to our deeds. 